have the, the code for the breakout game here. If anybody already has processing installed but doesn't have this code yet, uh, please come up to this table. Uh, <coughs> and we'll give it to you. Um, I also have this pirate pad set up, but nobody has Wi Fi, so that's not going to work. Um, okay, so I'm going to do this really short intro into these are the absolute minimal basics of coding. Uh, then I'm going to shortly walk through you through the code so you can see, okay, this happens here, that happens there. Uh, and after that, I'm just going to stand up and leave this place and start helping people who are stuck or. Uh, Can I clear his lift in? But I can't. Okay. Well, anyway. uh, Taimo is filming at the moment has also some processing experience, so if I'm busy helping somebody, he can help you as well. Uh, okay, so this is Breakout. Um, uh, and our version of Breakout is, is built up out of a few different elements. Um, first, up, there's the screen, which is the screen. Yeah, it's the screen. <laughs> Get over it. Uh, then there's uh, an object called a game frame, which is in breakout, the ball has to bounce inside of a, of a playing field. So in this case, it's called game frame. Um, then there are the actual bricks that you want to destroy as a user. Uh, those are called bricks. This is, so far, this is rocket science. Uh, then there's a ball and there's a paddle. So uh, these are the obje objects you can play around with. Um, so, for, for anybody who's never seen a programming language in their life, uh, this is your 30 second intro into stuff. Okay, so first of all there are variables. Uh, you should see this as containers that can contain values. This can be text or numbers or uh, a true or false state. Uh, but a variable holds, those, holds, holds that information and you can change that information inside of it. Um, then there's a function, which is a piece of code uh, that you can recycle, so use more than once. So imagine that uh, you as a human being would be a piece of software, uh, and you would have a function called uh, check if it's sunny. Then uh, that function would contain an, a, a, an amount of steps like look out the window, check the sky, do you see a sun? Yes, then it's sunny. And because this uh, check if it's sunny can be done multiple times by you, uh, this can be encapsulated inside a function. Um, uh, the next one, and that's maybe a little harder to grasp, is an object. So it is a thing inside a, a computer program. So that could be a, a car, a ball, a pedal, a human being. Um, and this, this object will contain, uh, most of the time, several variables and several <laughs> functions. So if we go back. Uh, the ball function of the ball will be an object. Uh, this will have several variables, like a position inside of the game world where it is, uh, and also have a function like uh, check if I'm destroying bricks. So, like this. Um, these three things can be uh, checked and manipulated on in different ways, which the most common ways are uh, the if statement, uh, check if something is true, if it's true, then you do this, if it's not true, maybe do something else. Uh, and also the for loop, which just um, repeats something until a certain condition is met. So in case of the, the bricks, um, you will for loop to check every brick, if it still exists, what color it should be, uh, that sort of thing you, you, you capture inside of a for loop. Um, so, once more, screen. Uh, and I'll just walk you shortly through the code. Um, if you boot it up, so it's scary, there's naked code on the screen. Um, so I see that the font is a little small, but I'll try to keep it uh, simple. Uh, on the top you see a number of tabs. So uh, the first tab is the, the actual game where you put some of the logics like, okay, you boot up the game, this is what's going to happen, um, and so on and so on. And then the following tabs are the, the different objects inside the game. So you have a, a ball, this describes the whole um, ball. <coughs> you have a brick, which describes the, the behaviors and the functions of the brick. Uh, the same thing with the paddle. And because if you would uh, 
and this this is a little uh, more advanced and I would just leave that alone for now but if you look at this uh, very um, abstractly you can see hey these are all rectangles so that's why the original code has an extra class called rectangle which is used to draw rectangles uh, and do some other things but all these other things because they are rectangles they will use the rectangle object uh, but messing around in this code will result in wildly erratic behavior, so that might be a little um, too much if you're a beginner. How do we get this? Uh... Yes, um, <laughs> I have it here, so start spreading it out. I actually have two USB sticks, so if you don't want to wait up. Anybody else need the code? I can throw it. No. Well, I'll just no. give it to you. <laughs> you see a lot of expensive lab books and all. Uh, okay, so um, if you boot it up, you see this. Um, processing uses colors, which is nice because it makes the text way more readable. Uh, everything that's a little grayed out is uh, so called comment, uh, which is uh, mostly used uh, by programmers to tell other programmers, okay, this is going on in the code. Um, I've been sitting a lot in trains uh, this week, so I've been pretty much filling this thing with comments to help you uh, get started. Uh, Couldn't write whole books. I could, I could write a book about this code by now. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do, um, and just type along, experiment along as we do this, because um, the whole thing is that uh, we're here to, to experiment on this code and break things. So don't be afraid if you break it. It's, it's kind of the point. Um, so uh, what this does is, uh, this is the, the tab which explains what the game is to the computer. So it tells, well, okay, we have this, this game frame object, which is the, the square which in the game exists. Uh, we have some bricks, we have a paddle, we have some balls. Um, so th this tells the computer, okay, these are the, the, the elements of the game we're playing. Um, this frame number, just ignore it. It's just uh, more of an uh, administrative number. You don't have to mess around with this one. Um, then we start getting into the background color, and if the background refreshes, um, and then... Um, what we see is, a, is, an, is an equal sign, or an is, is taken for the Dutch people. And this is where we start uh, assigning values to variables. And these are the... What does it mean to refresh a background? Ah, yes. Okay. So, um, um, if you have this, um, who has any experience in Flash? Forget that experience now. Uh, um, Processing is very rudimentary in its, in its drawing on the screen. Uh, with processing it is uh, every, uh, well, ar around 60 times in a second it will draw something new on the screen. Um, and if you don't explicitly tell processing, okay, delete the last frame of content, it will just draw over it. So if you have a square and you say the next frame, okay, draw a s square just slightly more to the left, um, it will show you two squares because the last frame is still in the picture. So if, if we turn off uh, background refreshes off, that will just start drawing over it again. So instead of a nice clean screen, we'll get a screen that will get more cluttered and cluttered and cluttered uh, until it's no longer making sense. Which is, uh, if it's, this was a, a, a truly playable game, it would be terrible, and now we're kind of making art, so it's fantastic. Um, uh, here you see colors, these look very cryptic, um, but there's actually a, a little tool in processing uh, which will help you select colors. Um, if you press tools um, and then color selector you can just fill around, if you know Photoshop this should be very familiar to you, uh, and then we're looking for this value. So if you copy and paste that, it'll be 
totally not. Um, okay. Uh, then another thing is, um, this game has a little thing built into it that instead of um, instead of throwing the whole frame away, it just <coughs> slightly makes it more transparent. So I can show you that. Uh, if we put this value to 255, which is like completely wipe my last frame, uh, the game will look like this. I hope it boots in the right window. Of course it doesn't, and this is also a very tweaked out version, and I'm already showing you. Okay. I'll just treat. And I'll stop using 200 balls in it. So if you would play this, okay, I should really, I hope I didn't give you this code, because this code is messed up for me. Let me check. Thank God. Okay, so this is, this is the game if you start it without. Uh, so there's a, there's a ball that will just go around. Uh, it will destroy a brick if you hit it, and when you hit it with a pedal, it bounces. So this is this is where we start. I'm just gonna check it. From Run the sketches on this place too. Um, and if we would. Uh, if we lower this value, like say zero, uh, it will not draw over the new frame, it will just draw in the new frame. So if we run it down, you'll see it won't remove things. It will just keep on drawing in the same screen. Which is, well, not very functional as a game, but it's already a completely different effect than what we started with. If we uh, would put this value anywhere between 0 and 255, like say, we'll put it on 10, you'll get this nice motiony, blurry thing going on. So now it looks all smooth, which is, you know. So that's one thing you can play around with. Uh, if you just want this completely destroyed, turn this to false. That will have the same effect as turning this into zero. See, then it just keeps drawing in the same frame. Um, create a cluttery mess, which is great. Okay, so after that, it's just uh, more game basic, so you could tweak around with that, but it may not be the most exciting effect ever. It's it will just tell, okay, this is the size of my screen, so this is the same size I want this in the game. Uh, if you want a really uh, slow and sluggish feeling game, you can lower the frame rate. Uh, now it's 60 frames a second, so it will look silky smooth. And we could also put this into, uh, like, well, let's not go overboard. 10, it will just draw 10 frames a second instead of 60. So it just <coughs> feels like a very slow... So, you know, if you want to play, want to create a game or an artwork that you can take a toilet break without missing anything, you could lower the frame rate to ridiculous. I will maybe hit that break. <laughs> so that's another thing you can do. Um, and here we, we, we got into the first function, this is called void setup, which is a processing way of saying, okay, we're booting up, what do I need for this game? So, this function is only triggered once, uh, and this is the part where you start assigning uh, values into variables and start saying, okay, um, create bricks, so, so let's get some bricks in the game, uh, let's get the ball in the game, let's get the pedal in the game. Um, 
And if you, if you would remove one of these things, like this, so I want a game without bricks, I don't care about bricks, bricks killed my family, so I don't want to see them anymore. Mm. Uh, they just remove that line, um, and then you get a game without bricks. So if you <coughs> always wanted to have a breakout without bricks, this is your lucky day. Uh, or maybe you don't want to create something with a paddle. You know, who needs paddles? The ball can perfectly complete its own game. Uh, so now it's just a ball and some bricks. So this is the start of the game. Um, and then we come into a, a function called void draw, and this is processing function that you will uh, execute 60 times a frame or whatever you entered into frame rate. Um, which the only thing it does is <coughs> calls other functions. Yeah. This is a way to keep your code uh, clean, uh, but for beginners it might be a little daunting, like, oh, that's a reference to that, that's a reference to that. Um, you mean 60 time, times per second, right? Yeah. Is that the same minute? Frame. Frame. Okay, no, no, just 60 times a second. Um, so this part may not be the most exciting part to start tweaking stuff. Uh, the next up is a function called create balls. So this is, uh, this, this actually creates the balls on the screen uh, with the first number being the most excited, number of balls. So if you want more balls, then you just blow this number up bigger. So now we have 60 balls. It starts making nice geometric shapes because of our uh, uh, because of our, our trail. Well, create bricks, sort of the same thing. Uh, you say, okay, this is the amount of bricks I want, this is the amount of bricks per row I want, so if you want really tiny bricks, uh, you keep, keep this number the same as that, and then you get one row of really <coughs> tiny bricks. Really tiny, well, we'll start seeing it as soon as it's like really tiny bricks, and then we cluster bomb the hell out of it. Uh, you can play around with the colors of the bricks, if they need a stroke around it, um, okay, so now uh, we, I've shown you some ways in which you can change the start conditions of the, of the game. So you can change the amount of bricks, you can change the amount of balls, you can change... Uh, but maybe you're like, okay, I don't want uh, to change the starting uh, parameters of the game. I just want one brick, one ball, of, uh, amount of bricks, one ball and a paddle. But I want to change the way the ball behaves. Well, if you want to do that, then you, you click on the ball tab, uh, and then you see all the uh, all the behaviors of the ball. So if you're like, okay, uh, width and height. So I think these balls are too tiny. I want bigger balls. Then you just expand this value to something else, and then you have a game with bigger balls. Still making nice uh, cluster bony on our single line. Or maybe you want quicker balls, then you can tweak the velocity to a higher way. Um, and now I've been keeping it symmetrical, but maybe you're like, I want, I want discs instead of balls, because I don't like balls. That's also an option. Uh, and then with this very simple changing of some numbers, the game looks radically different uh, and behaves in a, in a different way. So now you have some sort of geometric line drawing artwork. Um, well, the same, it, it's the same for brick and paddle. If you want to change the way they behave, you go to their tab and fiddle around with some numbers. Um, some short tips, uh, just start small, you know, start maybe with some examples I show you, uh, build on from that. Um, save constantly and under a new name if you have something on the screen it's like, okay, this, this is kind of cool, I don't hate this, <laughs> uh, then just save it under a new name and 
the great thing about pro processing is um, uh, if you save this under a new name, it will uh, automatically create the whole directory. It will need um, for you without any hassle. So you can just call this uh, awesome one. one. Yeah. Um, and then this this one will just stay there for you uh, to to look at another time. Uh, but you can just instantly tweak for it. Um, run your script ever, ever, after every change. So, especially if you're just starting out with programming, you will see a lot of this this red bar in the bottom. You see this a lot. Don't get you know insecure about it. I see this every two minutes when I'm working on something I don't really understand. Uh, so just try to figure out what you've done running in this case I I just remove this and it will run again. Um, if you don't want to press this this run button every time if you, to run it you can use command or control R uh, and I'll show you like this. Uh, or if you want to go really full screen without anything to distract you, you can use uh, Control or Command Shift R and it will go into Kiel's mode and just show you this thing. Uh, you'll exit it through using the escape key, so don't panic if you can't find a way to escape. Uh, and the last good trick is use uh, Control Slash to comment out a line. So. Um, Say I'm starting uh, with my uh, with my game and I'm like, oh, I don't want I don't want any pedals in it. You could destroy this line and run it, and it will work fine. But you won't have a pedal anymore. And ten minutes later, you're like, oh, maybe I do want a pedal because pedals are cool now. Wow. Uh, and then you have to remember the original line. Uh, a better way is to just use Command or Control slash and it will comment it out for you. So it won't run it, but you haven't lost the original information on that line. So if you're like, oh, I do want the pedal back, you just hit command slash again and it will reinstate it. So that's a good way to, to try things by turning them off and on again. Um, so that's it. Um, just go mess around in code, start breaking things. We'll be walking around trying to help you realize your ideas, uh, trying to explain uh, why certain behaviors are happening. Um, if you're happy with your result, uh, save it on a different name. We'll be running around with USB stick to collect your, uh, your best or your most idiotic results. Uh, we'll, we'll present them on this, this, this frame at the end. Uh, and I'll also be stealing your best results to show on the Bring Your Own Beamer next week. Uh, somewhere projected big so we can show how awesomely you all are at creative coding. Are there any questions before we start messing around in code?